Well, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, on the podcast, we're going to talk about what happened in Montgomery, Alabama, but we're not going to talk about the ancestral butt whipping. We're not really going to talk about that. We'll get to it, but that's not really the focus because we want to focus on something else because a lot of people have been messaging me about, Hey, what's going to be your opinion on that? And, you know, I really do have a, an opinion just about that itself, but I can't really do that on YouTube. So whenever I do that, I'll let y'all know. And y'all can go to my website, africandiasporanews.org and watch it. I'll put it in the free section um, it, just as a promotion, I guess, for the site. But that's why I put any commentary that I cannot do on any social media. And this is why you have to have your own. And that's what the purpose of me creating the website. So the video went viral and of course we're not showing that here because you know, certain people can show the video, certain people can't how it is on YouTube is who you are. Sometimes not even just what the rules are, but forget it. We going to do something else. So let's talk about the history of that same spot where the brothers and sisters gave an ancestral, but whipping. So in 1808, A little over 215 years ago, the United States Congress banned the importation of slaves from Africa. At the same time, the high price of cotton and the development of the cotton gin caused the demand for slave labor to skyrocket in the lower South. So the domestic slave trade grew to meet this demand. Over the next 50 years, slave traders forcibly transferred hundreds of thousands of enslaved people from the upper South to Alabama and the lower South. Now between 1808 and 1860, the enslaved population of Alabama grew from less than 40,000 to more than 435,000. The Alabama had one of the largest slave populations in America at the start of the civil war. In order to meet the high demand for slaves in Alabama in the early 1800s, slave traders chained black Americans together in coffers they say, and forced them to march hundreds of miles. They say from the upper south to the lower south, including Montgomery. And they say the overland transportation of enslaved people by foot was slow and expensive. By the 1840s, slave traders began to take advantage of the two new modes of transportation, the steamboat and the railroad. Steamboats carried slaves from Mobile and New Orleans up the Alabama River to Montgomery. Rail routes constructed with slave labor connected Montgomery's train station to West Point, Georgia, and lines extending to the Upper South. Hundreds of enslaved people began arriving by rail and by boat each day in Montgomery, turning the city into a principal slave trading center in Alabama. So when you see those brothers and sisters taking it to the white supremacists in that video, when you see Unk with that world-famous chair now, I remember WWE had made that famous, but now Unc then took that to another level with the chair. When you seen the brothers and sisters skipping to go whip some white supremacists for doing what they were doing, they were filled with the rage of the ancestors. Slave people who arrived at the riverfront or at the train station were paraded up Commerce Street to be sold in the city slave markets. Now Montgomery had grown into one of the most prominent slave trading communities in Alabama by 1860. At the start of the Civil War, the city had a larger slave population than Mobile, New Orleans, or Natchez, Mississippi. Montgomery attracted a growing number of major slave traders whose presence dominated the city's geography and economy. The Montgomery Probate Office granted at least 164 licenses to slave traders operating in the city from 1848 to 1860. Slave traders' offices They say we're located primarily along Commerce Street and Market Street, now Dexter Avenue. They say over time, Montgomery became one of the most important and conspicuous slave trading communities in the United States. They say after Alabama legislature banned free black people from residing in the state in 1833, enslavement was the only legally uh, authorized status for black Americans in Montgomery. So they said that no free black people can be in Alabama. The only way you can be there unless you are a doggone slave. See, this is the, this is that history that they want to wipe away from you. But they always trying to tell you you're angry. You doggone right. We angry. We have ancestral anger. 
Like, see, black folks for a long time have, have oh, the angry black man, the angry black woman. I don't want to be labeled that. Why not? Let's think about that. Why not? You should be angry the way we're treated. You should be angry about your history. You should. That's not nothing sweet that we have in this country. We're not treated sweet now. What any person who got some common sense would be angry at this. The only way things will change unless we're angry. Now you, you wonder why we truly can't get along is because of this ancestral rage and ancestral justice that has to be done. And these people know that they need to do what's right, but they don't want to. You understand? And this is why we truly can't get along. You can't get along with people that you still got an ancestral beef with. Even though the slaves are deceased and the slave traders are deceased, the people that live today have their ancestral lineage. The folks got their ancestral lineage of a slave trader, colonizer, devil, and we have the lineage of our ancestors who were enslaved, who fought back many times who built America, innovated America. That's in us too. They ancestors, that's why they always walking around, always scared of black people. You know why they always really scared of you? Not because you're trying to do them anything. It's because they know what they have done to you. They know things that they have done that some of us don't even know. They know what they do to you now. This is why they're afraid of you. You're like, I ain't doing anything. Why are they so afraid of me? It's not about you. You could be the, the best person in the world. You could never hurt a, a person. You could have never even squashed a bug in your life, right? But it's, it's in them because they know what they did. That's why they're so obsessive with a gun. Because you see what happened in that video. When they don't have a gun in their hand, look what happens. Immediately, they get in their butts whipped. So that's why they're like, oh, you can have open carry. You can do this and that and the third. It's because they can't fight with their hands. They have always proven that. We're talking about as a collective. We're not talking about a few here and there that could actually fight. We're talking about as a collective, when black folks say, let's, let's get it on. You see what happens. We've been fighting forever. We will fight for fun in our neighborhoods. Come on now. We would box in our neighborhoods. I remember that in mind. Hey, y'all, y'all want to fight? Put on them gloves. Get, let's get it. Get in the yard. Whoever win, hey, shake the man's hand. That was always encouraged about fighting. But boxing, though, not, not just open fist. That's a sport, right? So let's continue. They said Commerce Street was central to the operation of Montgomery's slave trade. Enslaved people were marched in chains up the street from the riverfront and railroad stations to the slave auction site or to the local slave depots. Warehouses were critical to the city's slave trade. Slave traders confined enslaved people in warehouses until they could be sold during slave auctions. Now that 122 Commerce Street was a very large warehouse owned by John Murphy, who provided support to slave traders in the city and built the Murphy House on Bibb Street. The Commerce Street Warehouse was used in the 1850s by slave traders like H.W. Farley, who advertised the sale of enslaved children, little children. Now, you know the white supremacists, how they always target children and they want to sexualize children. If they have a thing about children, if you look into white supremacist history, they are the biggest you know, pedophiles that ever walked the face of the earth. You look at their history. Don't believe me. Look at their history. I always tell y'all that. Look at their history. All the, all the filth that was going on in Rome and all the things they were doing in, in, in the Dark Ages and all that. Look into it. How they used to put their boys in dresses. They claim that they didn't have no money, so that's why they made them wear a dress. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it gets really, really sick. You start really researching that history. Now they say about 14, they say a quote, they say about 14, very likely they said, um, and sprightly, they said about a particular slave child. They said the warehouse remained in the hands of, of owners involved 
in the slave trade to the end of the civil war. It said Montgomery slave traders operated depots where enslaved men, women, and children were confined. The slave depots functioned as active trading sites and detention facilities. It said where the enslaved were held captive until they were auctioned. It said at Square Court, the city had four major slave depots. Three of the depots lined Market Street, now Dexter Avenue, between Lawrence and McDonough, and were owned by Mason Harwell, S. N. Brown, and E. Bernard and Company. It said in 1859, Montgomery had as many as uh, as it did hotels and banks. When it comes to we talk about slave depots. It said the slave trade continued to thrive in Montgomery even during the Civil War. It said as late as 1864, Thomas I. Frazier opened a new slave depot on Market Street and sold boys and girls of all descriptions. It said vast plantations with large slave populations emerged. It said in Alabama's Black Belt beginning in 1820. Now the Montgomery's proximity to the Black Belt made the city a center for slave trading in Alabama. It said from the river down Commerce Street to Market Street. Those of you from Alabama know exactly what I'm talking about. You know these locations. You know sisters and brothers that's there. It says slave traders worked next door to shop owners and other businesses establishments as a E. Bernard and company operated at 88 Commerce Street. Mason Harwell, one of Montgomery's most active slave traders, kept an office at 21 Market Street, now Dexter Avenue. It says on a single day, Harwell sold hundreds of enslaved men, women, and children alongside livestock. So he sold black folks like a cow. This is what these people were doing. And this is what they don't, they don't want you to know the full length of our slavery, what they were doing, the horrors of slavery. They want to have, they have the demonic nerve to tell you, well, why can't you just get over it? When you go tell the Jews to get over it, when you go tell them to get over it, I want you to go tell them to get over it. And I want to be, I want to be a fly on the wall when you tell them to get over it. Like you tell us to get over it. See, one thing about the Jewish community and I respect that about the Jewish community. They enact consequences for you even saying that to them. If they doing business with you, they cutting you off quick because you disrespected them. And they said that never again. And I agree with the Jewish community. We should be saying that times a thousand. We could be cool with you all day, but the moment you disrespect us when it comes to slavery, you say the N word, you're done. I'm telling y'all right now, I'm that way. You disrespect my ancestors by slavery, telling me to get over it and we doing anything together, we done. You calling me the N-word, we done. I don't, I don't care if I what we got going on, you're done. Because I respect myself, my family, my ancestors, my lineage. I respect all of that. To not let anybody disrespect where I come from. Now I say across the South, that slave traders were generally among the wealthiest and most influential citizens in their communities. They became wealthy off of selling black folk wealthy. When y'all talk about a wealth gap, the slave was being sold and had nothing. These folks was made wealthy. That wealth transferred to the folks today. This is why when they talk about the wealth gap, you can't close it without reparations. It's nothing you can do to close it except reparations. This is why reparations is very important. And this is why we're saying to the Democrat party, you, if you want our votes like that, you got to do reparations. That is the only way to truly close the wealth gap. You got a group of people that had a major head start on us while we were slaves on a plantation. We got off the plantation, supposedly got off the plantation and we still were set behind. Then we work hard, build things up with our hands. We get land. We do all these things to do for ourselves. And even in that time period, we was doing very well. Here come the demonic white supremacists to destroy everything that we have built. Then those same people, those the same people who are descendants of slave traders, descendants of pedophiles, with descendants of, of murderers and, and, and pillagers and everything else. They're going to open their mouth and tell you, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. After they destroyed all the things that you built for your family. Then today you have those brothers and sisters 
who's still trying to fight to get some sort of reparations for Black Wall Street. Those brothers and sisters built that with their own hands. They pulled themselves up by their bootstraps. And every time black folks in this country pull themselves up by their bootstraps, here come the white supremacists coming to destroy everything they work for. Black success, black happiness, it's the two things that really irk the nerves of the white supremacists. He and she hates that. Another thing, the white supremacists can't stand for you to be away from them. He or she has to go see where you're at, what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're listening to, how you're dressing, how you're fixing your hair, what perfume or cologne you're wearing, what makeup are you wearing, what shoes are you wearing, what rings are you wearing, what watches are you wearing. They are hella obsessive with us. They cannot for the life of themselves leave us alone. I think the best thing they could ever do is just leave us alone. Say, look, listen, I get it. You don't like us. Fine. You go your way. I go my way and we good. That's what the honorable Elijah Muhammad was, was telling us for a long time. Look, they just need to go their way, go ours. And we good on that. We ain't got to fight each other. We ain't got to be, be having no problems. You go your way. I go mine. And then when black folks get on that, they the main ones crying. Think about that. Every time that we try to do something by ourselves, they cry about it. We say, hey, man, you know what? Since we, since we can't get no home loans in these, in these banks that's owned by the folks, and since we can't get no business loans, hey, let's go ahead on and just get with the black banks. And let's go over here. Oh, why y'all want to do that? That's segregation. I mean, we ended that a long time ago. Now you guys want segregation? Why black people want to go to the black banks? Let's go back to the reason why. See, one thing the white supremacists don't want to do is actually talk about why you want to do it. What's the why, right? You refuse to give them home loans and business loans. So that's the cause. The effect is let's go to the black banks so we have a better chance of getting it. You understand? When black people say, hey, look, man, you go over there, stay over there, I'll be over here, and we good. Why y'all doing that? What is the cause? Racism, white supremacy, oppression, when we around you. So the effect is black people say, okay, let's go over here, right? It's always a cause to what we're doing. And our cause isn't their demonic cause. It's not that we can't stand them because of the color of their skin. That, I told you that's the most remedial and idiot thing you could do. You don't like somebody for their skin color. That's stupid. That is so stupid. Think about that. Nobody can help the color of their freaking skin. Nobody can help nothing like that. An animal can't help the, the, the color of its coat that's on its body. An insect can't help the way it looks or, or anything. Can't change it. But these people, the white supremacist has said the color of my skin is better. And then the sun says different. They cry every time that we want to do things on our own. They cry when we say, Hey, Hey, wait a minute. That's our culture right there. Why are you trying to be a culture vulture in our, our situation? Why? Oh, why y'all acting like that? Oh, the, but why don't you go be a culture vulture in other people's culture? I tell you, they can't stay away from us. Listen, it is so bad. Listen to what I'm telling you. Any of you have been to the African continent, the Caribbean, any other black nation. If you look at the head count of who's on that plane, it's not a bunch of us. They're landing in those black countries every single day laying up in those black countries, vacationing, doing everything in those black countries, having a great time in those black countries. I've seen it with my own eyes. And it, the first time you see it, you'd be like coming from America. I remember we went to Kenya the first time and one of the brothers that, that, uh, that came, he pulled me to the side and say, Phil, 
Look at that. And the folks was all laid out over the pool. Oh, it was a bunch of the folks. We in Kenya. And they all laid out. And, 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 and coming from America, you like, they call us all kind of N-words. They mass incarcerate us. They hate everything about us. But they want to come to Kenya? They want to be in that around a bunch of black folk? You know what I'm saying? So that's something we know how to start discussing. Why is it that they don't want to really stay away from us like that? They don't want us to be by ourselves in no way, shape, form, or fashion. Now, let's let's get to something else. Now, we talk about what happened, the brawl that broke out in, in, in Alabama, right in Montgomery. On, on August the 5th at the Riverfront Park near that historical site. Now, of course, they said the story was the brother was actually a uh, captain of a riverboat, and he wanted them to move, actually, um, because their boat was in the way. And they didn't want to, the other boats had to park there. Well, instead of moving, they decided to start swinging on his brother, and his brother did a Bobby Schmurder and threw the hat up. And the brother got with it. Now, when the brother got with it, the ancestral, you know, anger rose up within those brothers and sisters. And then, as you've seen on the video, the butt whipping commenced. You see, a lot of black people are not satisfied. A lot of black people are upset. A lot of black people, you know, seeing that we need reparations in this country. We've seen a Democrat party give all our tax dollars to everybody else but us. These people, I'm telling you, like I said, they have not only done things horribly to black folks, but you got other people throughout the world. This is why the world is starting to gather against them right now in the form of bricks, because they're saying, look, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of this. Like I say, these people have been doing this mess for way too long to everybody. I'm even seeing brothers and sisters that are getting excited about even some of the things that happen on the African continent. I even get messages and, and seeing comments with people saying, man, look, if it go down in Niger, if it go down in, in Burkina Faso, whatever, man, I go over there and I, I fight the white supremacists too. And brothers, brothers and sisters did that many times, actually, when Ethiopia had, had to fight against the Italians, brothers and sisters from right here was trying to go over there to fight. And a few did go over there and fight. But the, you know what this country did? They blocked black people from going to Ethiopia to fight. Now, that's their own choice if they want to fight, right? It's their own choice. But but no, they want to hold you here. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm going to continue to tell you something. They don't really, you know, all, listen, they don't want you to leave. I'm telling you, I know what I'm telling you. They would do everything possible to prevent you. I'm talking about black folks, you, especially you. They don't want you gone. Then white supremacists can say all the stuff they say to you, but they don't want you gone. They raised the price of renouncing your citizenship to twenty three fifty. It used to be a little under five hundred dollars. And people keep leaving and renouncing their citizenship. It's gonna go up to ten. I see it happening because more and more people are leaving. More, like quiet as it's kept. Black folks are even leaving. Now, I'm not talking to the crowd that's swinging the American flag and, and, and you and your whole lot is here. You're not going to do nothing else. That's your business. Do do you. I'm, I'm never going to stop you from doing you. But I'm talking about just reality and what's happening. Like billions of dollars of, uh, uh, in, in travel money has been spent by a lot of black people traveling. That's why they liked when the pandemic happened because they stopped the movement of black people traveling and black people taking their money out of here and spending it elsewhere. You understand? But they don't want you gone like that. You better believe that. Cause like I said, you can't even go down the street without them freaking following you. Think about that. You can't even go down the street. You go somewhere. You know how they say, let me go see what the blacks are doing. Why? If they're away from you, you say, oh, good, let them stay over there. But they know when we get by ourselves, and, 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 they, and they know when we could have the good, decent brothers and sisters without the degenerates that they created. Because trust me, the degenerates in our community, white supremacy created that. That doesn't come from us. The Sukihanas and all that's, that crowd, they don't, that's, they don't come from, from us like that. 
That's the creation of the white supremacists to unleash chaos in our community. You you saw the movie, uh, they cloned Tyrone. Look, that's a movie, but doggone it, it had a lot of hidden messages in it. How they keep the black community in chaos. It's the truth. But one thing about us, we after after the 400 years is up, and I don't know if y'all seen the shift, but you remember the scriptures taught that you will go into slavery for 400 years, and after the 400 years, I will bring judgment on those people. Now, think about it. The 400 years, everybody say, a lot of people say 2019. Have you noticed the chaos has been happening to the white supremacists since 2018? Uh, 19. Think about it. How in that short amount of time, this country has been going in a tailspin and Donald Trump's out of office. So you can't say, Oh, it's Trump, Trump, Trump. Biden's in office. He's a Democrat. Can't say it's Trump. Now the United States lost their credit rating. There was a triple a, now they are double a plus. You understand people can't afford to live in this country much anymore. People are homeless. They got people in other countries that that's not even homeless like that. We supposed to be the so-called we supposed to be the so-called richest country in the world, but we got homeless people. That shouldn't even be happening. And I'm telling y'all, and I'm going to repeat that again by 2030, you won't know America anymore. Some of you same people, I'm going to speak that to you because you, I, you will come back and tell me some of you same flag waving people talking about, you, you know, anchoring yourself here, people. That's that conversation is going to change because it's going to get it's going to get bad. It's going to get bad. It's not going to get worse. It's going to get bad. It don't matter who you elect. You can bring Biden back. You can bring Trump back. Don't matter. It's the inevitable. Now, it's like when you hear the call from the Lord, are you going to say, "I'd rather be in Babylon"? Or I'd rather go to the promised land. That's the only decision that you're going to make at that point. I already know what I'm going to do. I'm not, I'm not telling y'all nothing. I don't even preach that to y'all too much no more because you're hard headed. One thing about y'all and the Bible is right. Y'all are a hard head, stubborn and stiff neck people. I know you all, you will fight all day long until you get in the thick of it. Then you're crying. And then some of you so ate up with, with, with the white supremacists entitlement with the white supremacist attitude that even when you go other places, you, you bring the white man with you. That that's something I just can't stand to see in some of you. You can't stand the white supremacist, but a lot of you got his same ways, attitude and, 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 and mouth and everything else. Check your attitude. But when it comes to these brothers and sisters that had ancestral rage and People don't understand that that wasn't just defending that brother. That was, that was for the ancestors right there. What you saw in that video and the folks just trying to rationalize it. Oh, look how violent they are. And oh my God. I mean, yes, I understand the guys that hit them, but I mean, they should have just stopped it from happening. They have to do all that. Don't start fights. You don't want to finish. That's all. Leave black people alone. I'm telling you, just leave black people alone. When they want to do their own thing, just let them be. As long as they're not coming to bother you, as long as they're not destroying your things, as long as they're not committing a crime against you, just leave them alone. I'm telling you, it it will go so much easier. But y'all like to keep picking and picking and picking and prodding and picking and picking and picking. It's like, and and then, then then when black folks unleash on you, you want to cry, file and be a victim. Y'all traded our ancestors like animals. Y'all made so much wealth off of doing that. Y'all robbed little children of a life, men and women of lives. You made leather goods out of the skin of black people. You were feeding black babies to alligators called. That's why they were called black people alligator bait. This is your, this is what you done. And you don't think there's some ancestral rage that's still there.
it's not like the Civil War ended and black people would walk up the plantation. Hey, and we got along after that and everything was all good. No, uh-uh. After Reconstruction, or during Reconstruction, you had the Union troops there for about 10 years or so. And the moment the Union troops left, y'all went to enacting Jim Crow. So you can't just even just say slavery because Jim Crow was about a hundred years. Sharecropping, which was slavery, another form of slavery, black codes and putting black men in prison and do all your work. Another form of slavery. You still got the slavery today. The savagery that go on in prisons is created by the white supremacists. It is it, a savage world. And they think they don't, they not going, they don't have to answer and receive judgment for what they have done. I would be afraid to be the folks personally. I would be afraid of them. If I was them, I would be trying to gain every bit of repentance I can get and say, what can I do to, to show repentance? Because I do not want the judgment that's coming for me. I don't want it. So what I can do to fix this, God, please tell me what I can do to fix it. If it's reparations, if it's giving them land, if it's whatever it may be, I don't know, but I'm willing to do it because I don't want that. And every day black people are, are, are turning away. They don't care. No more. Like at one point in time, black folks used to even care about what they think, man, black folks now is like, they want something different. And that's, that's making them afraid. Listen, when you see black people falling away from the Democrat party, that's something you need to be worried about for them because wait a minute, they're not believing in our system no more. And when black people don't believe in your system no more, that means they're looking to fix their own problems and that and enact justice so they can live right. One of the greatest mistakes that black people made was to believe in their system. The thinking that you can vote and get something out of it. When we never voted to get anything in this country, Everything that we did, we did it through the grassroots. We forced politicians to do stuff. We didn't go beg them. We didn't go vote for anything. Remember the Civil Rights Act, y'all didn't vote for that. Y'all didn't vote for Fair Housing Act. Y'all didn't vote for any of those things. Remember, all that came because of what the brothers and sisters did at the grassroots level. They love to get you arguing about the voting arguing about this and arguing about that. They love that because as long as you arguing about if the Democrats are better and all that sort of thing, then, then, Hey, you still, you still, you still on a hamster wheel of the system. You believe in them to save you. You believe in them to provide for you. You believe in them. As long as you believe in them, that's good because in the Willie Lynch letter, it clearly states we got to keep them depending on us. It clearly says that. And as long as you talk about Democrat, and even if you talk about Republican, I'm talking about depending on the Republicans. You shouldn't depend on Democrats and you shouldn't depend on Republicans either. You should depend on your God, yourself, your family, and your community. That's it. Not, not, no, not a group of people who is a descendant of slave traders. Just like we are descendants of slaves, they are descendants of slave traders. We have to embrace what the future is for us and be open to whatever the future is for us. Because a lot of you say you read the Bible. How many times have God told his people, Hey, I'm about to judge this place, gather your belongings and head to a land. I'm going to show you. And people that don't want to go, they will be swallowed up in that judgment. That's happened so many times. Do it. Then the Bible teach that I am the Lord. I change not. You think they won't happen again? Don't be that type of person that turns to a pillar of salt being hard headed. Don't be them people that didn't want to cross, cross the, uh, the red sea. Even though we got a lot in our community. Cause remember the children of Israel, they loved Egypt and they were, they were the slaves there and they, they loved it. They wanted to go back to it. That'd probably be some of y'all. You go to a new promised land. You're crying about America. Crying that you you wish you were back over there, even though you you getting shot in the head, knee on the neck, and mass incarcerated, and everything else. Yeah, we were better than here. 
But shout out to those brothers and sisters for putting in the work. You know, since we revise in history and all of that, um, we will say that uh, the Montgomery, um, you know, beat down out there, that that was a pivotal moment uh, in the civil rights movement. We, we will say that, you know, that, that's that's a one of the pivotal days of civil rights in America. Since we're going to just go revise history uh, like Ron DeSantis is trying to do in Florida. Uh, 